Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice differential equation. We have y as a function of x, and the third derivative of y is equal to the first derivative of y. And you're like, why? Well, that's given. So we have a function whose third derivative equals its first derivative. Think about which function can satisfy this. Can we integrate both sides and get something from here? Something to think about. All right, so I'll be presenting one method. I don't know if there is actually a second method. Actually, I do. Uh, by using power series, we can definitely solve this problem in a different way. But anyways, first of all, I wanted to say that if we integrate both sides, we're going to be getting the second derivative of y, because if you integrate the third derivative, you're going to be going back, right? So it's going to be the second derivative. And that is equal to y, but when you integrate y prime, it's going to be y plus c. There's always going to be a constant, because if you differentiate the both sides, you should be getting back, right? And when you differentiate the derivative, it's zero, because it's rate of change of a function and constants do not change, right? The horizontal lines. So. Let's see if we can find something from here. I mean, we should be able to, right? We have something like this, y double prime is equal to y plus c. I could integrate both sides one more time. It's going to give me y prime. But then I'm going to be getting something like this. And we don't even know what y is, so how are we going to integrate it? We can't do it. We're kind of stuck here. So we need to do something else. So one of the things we can do is think about a function whose second derivative is the same function with a constant involved. Does that make sense? Okay. Could it be something like maybe e to the power x? Because as you know, if y is equal to e to the power x, its first derivative is e to the x, and then its second derivative is also e to the x. But wait a minute. What about the constant? Well, when we differentiate, the constant disappears, so maybe it'll work. Let's test it out. So if y is equal to e to the x, and then Double, y double prime is e to the x, so they are the same. But how could the difference be a constant? Maybe y does not equal e to the x, and it's equal to e to the power 2x, or some number x, right? Let's go ahead and differentiate this. This is going to give me 2e to the 2x, and then integrating, I mean differentiating one more time, is going to give me 4e to the power 2x. And now if you subtract y from this, so it's, in other words, I'm looking at this as y double prime minus y equals a constant because that's the equation I'm trying to solve, right? And I can basically uh, plug it in uh, 4e to the 2x minus y, which is e to the 2x equals a constant. But as you know, this is not always a constant. So this is kind of problematic. How can we, you know, achieve an equality? So let's go ahead and forget about this. These assumptions did not get us anywhere, but we have to kind of do it more systematic, all right? So let's think of it this way. I have a non-homogeneous equation, right? It's non-homogeneous because we have something on the right-hand side. Or is it still homogeneous when we have a constant, right? That's a good question. But anyways, I'm just going to think about uh, for the homogeneous case, which is c equals 0. What would happen if we had c equals 0? You would get something like this, y double prime equals y. And you probably know that this is satisfied by y equals e to the x, right? Or 5 times e to the x, or any constant k times e to the x, or c times e to the x, correct? Well, yes, but is that the only thing? How about e to the power negative x, right? When if you differentiate e to the power negative x once, you get negative e to the negative x. And if you differentiate this one more time, you get e to the power negative x again. So it kind of works. So could we think about it in more general terms? Are those the only two solutions? So we can kind of approach it this way. First of all, uh, this equation, I can just replace y with e to the power kx, because I don't know what k is. Suppose we don't. And then you can go ahead and just replace y with e to the kx. So when you differentiate once, you're going to get k e to the power kx. When you differentiate one more time, you're going to get k squared e to the power kx. Awesome. Now, 
Let's go ahead and plug this into our equation to find the value of k if possible. Replace y double prime with this, k squared e to the kx minus y, which is e to the kx equals 0. From here, we get k squared minus 1 times e to the kx equals 0. Obviously, e to the kx is not going to be 0 at all. So this needs to be 0, which indicates k is either 1 or negative 1. And that just means that, uh, as we confirmed earlier, e to the x and e to the negative x are both going to work, right? But take a look. This is the equation that I have. y double prime minus y is equal to c. And we kind of have to solve it in a different way. So we kind of need to find a particular solution for this. So how can I find a particular solution, right? If y is equal to any polynomial like, let's say, x, right? Its first derivative is 1 and its second derivative is going to be 0. Their difference is still going to be in terms of x, right? Or maybe negative x. How could I achieve a difference of constants? I could possibly do this maybe. How about uh, y equals a constant like c sub 1? And then if you differentiate y once, you're going to get 0. And if you differentiate it one more time, you're going to get 0. So the difference of 0 minus c sub 1 is supposed to be c which means c sub 1 is negative c. Hmm. That means I could just assume that y equals negative c is a solution. Actually, it's a particular solution to this equation. So we kind of put it together, right? But wait a minute. This is kind of like the first method, but uh, there is a different way to do it. So let's go ahead and let's suppose this is the first method and let's talk about the second one. The second one method is more direct. Because what we have is actually really workable. I mean, we can do it directly. You don't really need this. And also, what's nice about it is that this is homogeneous. So you don't need a particular solution. Make sense? We're going to go through the same thing. Basically, this is going to be like y equals e to the kx. And then you're going to differentiate three times. y prime is going to be ke to the kx. Second derivative is going to be k squared e to the kx. Because every time you're getting a k, and then the triple prime is going to be k cubed e to the kx. Now I'm supposed to subtract k cubed e to the kx minus e to the kx equals 0. This gives us k cubed uh, minus 1. Actually, that's not right because I'm supposed to use the derivative here, not the y itself. So the derivative is k e to the kx equals 0. And if you take out k e to the kx, you're going to get k squared minus 1. Again, we're going to get 1 and negative 1, but also k equals 0, which is nice. So k equals 0, or k equals 1, or k equals negative 1. Which means, from here, y equals e to the power 0 is a solution, which means y equals e to the 0, that's 1. Or y equals e to the kx, which is x, and y equals e to the power negative x. These are all solutions, but let's go ahead and take a linear combination of all these solutions. And now we can express the general solution as y equals c sub 1 e to the x plus c sub 2 e to the negative x plus another constant c sub 3. And if you plug it in, you're going to realize that this actually works. Now, what is the third method? That's basically using power series. And the power series are basically, you're just going to assume that y can be written as something like this, n equals 0 to infinity, a sub n, x to the power n. Make sense? So when you expand this, you're going to get something like a sub 0, a sub 1x, a sub 2x squared, a sub 3x cubed, a sub 4x to the fourth, so on and so forth. You're going to differentiate. This is y. You're going to differentiate it one, more, one, one time, and that's going to give you a1, and then plus 2a sub 2x, plus 3a sub 3x squared, plus 4a sub 4x cubed, so on and so forth. You're going to differentiate it one more time. The second derivative is going to be 2a sub 2, plus 6a sub 3x, plus 12a sub 4x squared, so on and so forth. And uh, finally, for the third time, you're going to get 6a sub 3, plus 24a sub 4x. And notice that these are like 3 times 2, 6 times 4, or maybe you can think of these as factorials, so on and so forth. And guess what? You're going to plug it in and set this whole thing equal to the first derivative, which is this, and then set the coefficients equal to each other, find all the coefficients, 
blah, 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 and you're going to get the same answer. You should be getting the same answer. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.